Hi everyone, it's Alice and today it's time to share with you my very favorite books that I read in 2023. So I have a stack of books to show you. I have three books that I gave five stars to that were my absolute, absolute favorites. But then I also have some books that I gave four stars to that have really stuck with me and I still think about a lot. And sometimes I give books four stars and they don't stick with me in the same way. So these are the best books that I read the past year. I'm gonna save my absolute favorites for the end so we'll go through the other ones first. These are in no particular order and first up we have The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyd. This is historical literary fiction and in it we follow a man throughout his entire life. We technically actually meet him before he's born. We meet his mother while she's pregnant and she's gotten pregnant out of wedlock and because of that she's cast out from her community and eventually this boy is put up for adoption like pretty sure it's right after he's born and he's adopted by this fairly wealthy eccentric couple from Dublin and we follow him during his upbringing his parents are like a little bit distant and he's never like fully a member of their family in a weird way and his dad keeps like pointing out that he's not a real Avery and he's sort of he doesn't really have anything to hold on to, but then in his childhood he meets this boy named Julian and they become friends and this friendship becomes kind of the most important thing to him in his life. Now this starts off in the 1940s and we follow our main character all the way up until like the 2000s and for me, who is a reader who's all about characters, this was just amazing. This is a very character-driven book, obviously, because we follow the same character for so long, and I just loved following him. You get to know him really intimately, and he has a lot of struggles, this guy, and you just can't help but feel for him. And throughout his life, he makes all of these decisions, and sometimes you don't agree with him, but you do understand where he's coming from. And I was just so incredibly invested in this character. Obviously, in order to craft this kind of character, the writing needs to be really good, and it is. And it's not just good when it comes to the characters, it's also great when it comes to the different settings and the different time periods. And I especially loved the time that we spent in Ireland in this book. I just think this is such a good solid book and I think if you like these kinds of stories this is one of the best ones that you're gonna read because it's just excellent. The writing is amazing, the character is amazing that we're following in here and it's really immersive and emotional. The second book that I have is also very much about the characters. It's Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. And in here we follow this Chinese-American family living in a small town in Ohio in the 70s. And this family consists of a mother, a father, and two daughters. And one of the daughters of this family, like she's very clearly the favorite, and the parents are really on her about pursuing the dreams that they were never able to pursue. But then everything falls apart when that daughter is found dead in a local lake. We follow the family in their immense grief, but we also have chapters set in the past where we get to see the daughter and some of the time leading up to her death. And if you've been on this channel a lot, you will know that I am obsessed with Celeste Ng and her writing. Like there's something about the way she writes characters that just really gets to me and I don't know how to describe it, but it's just so freaking good. There is a bit of a mystery in here as well, like we're trying to find out what led to the daughter's death, but this really is a character-driven story. It's like characters are at the center of the story. It's about family dynamics and we have this mother-daughter relationship in here that we're exploring that is so incredibly interesting and I think about it all the time. It's also a book about grief and how different people deal with grief differently, which I thought was really interesting. And again, the writing is just excellent. And I feel like this is a great example of complex and complicated characters and relationships. And it's just absolutely brilliant. Then we have a little bit of a tone shift with this next one. And this leans into being a little bit more about the plot. It's The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. 
This is historical fiction fantasy set in Victorian England and we meet this woman who is a Victorian lady but she's also a thief and she's a part of this secret society of lady thieves like they're all women and they have a lot of fun but of course they maintain proper etiquette because there are certain ways that you need to do things and then someone sends an assassin after this main character and it's kind of like a mark of what a good thief she is, but it's also a little bit of a nuisance. This book is, in a lot of ways, ridiculous, but in the best way, and I had such a good time reading this book, like it was just so much fun. I love how this is set in Victorian times, and I love how this book sort of makes fun of that time in a way, because we have these ladies who are like very proper, and there are proper ways of doing things, but they're also criminals, but they follow these like, rules about how to be a thief like a lady thief so there are certain ways that you need to rob people in order for like you have to do it the right way there's like the right way to blackmail a friend where it's not like super rude and i just love the humor of that because there were so many rules and restrictions in victorian times and this just takes it to another level where it's just hilarious. This is also in a lot of ways a pirate adventure, but instead of the ladies having ships, they have flying houses, which is so much fun and it felt really creative. And although there is like a little bit of romance in here, there's a little bit of steam, and there's a lot going on with the plot, I think one of the reasons that this worked for me is that at the core of the story, we have this main character who is trying to find her place in life and finding out what she wants out of life, which I really, really enjoyed. I also really liked the writing in here. Like, I really liked the style of it. And I just had such a good time with this book and it was just a blast. And I feel like it's perfect if you want a book about women wreaking havoc. Like, if that's what you want, this is for you. Next, we have this beautiful book. This is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. And this is also historical fiction fantasy. And in here, we follow this Cambridge scholar who studies fae and fairies. And she's working on making the first encyclopedia of fairy lore. And she's really, like, she's really smart and she's great at research. And she goes on this research trip but unfortunately she's not that good with people and because of that she kind of gets on the wrong side of everyone in the village that she goes to to do this research project. Luckily though she's soon joined by her friend slash rival who shows up uninvited and he has this annoying charm to him and everyone just immediately likes him which does end up helping her with her research and they end up working on some of this research together and they go on all of these adventures that I don't think any of them had seen coming. I loved following our main character in here and I love the atmosphere of this book and the different settings that we get to see and I loved exploring this magical world and it feels very mysterious, a little bit dark, a little bit dangerous, but also just enchanting. I also really loved the dynamic between the two characters in here, like the researcher and the guy who shows up uninvited. Like I ended up getting very invested in their dynamic. This is in a lot of ways a cozy book, like it has a cozy vibe to it, but it also has some darker parts which I really liked and I feel like it hit the sweet spot between being cozy but also having these more mysterious darker elements to it. I think this has the perfect balance of characters, plot, and world building, and I'm just obsessed with it. Now that I'm talking about it, I feel like I should change my rating to five stars for this one, actually, because I just absolutely loved it. Then we have another magical book, which is also historical fiction fantasy. It's Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman. This is the prequel to Practical Magic, and it tells the origin story of the Owens curse, which we see in the other books. It follows Maria Owens in the 1600s, and we get to see how she learned magic, how she made it to America, and how she eventually ended up being accused of witchcraft in Salem. I could go on and on and on about Alice Hoffman's writing, but I never feel like I 
am able to capture what it's like but I feel like Hoffman isn't just a writer she's a true storyteller and it feels like she weaves stories in a way that I just I don't know if I know of any other authors that does it quite like this and I just absolutely loved it like I'm obsessed with the writing we can meet a character in here and within like four sentences you know exactly who they are and you feel like you've known them for years and it's just amazing. Again I would say this is more of a character driven book and we don't just follow Marie Owens in here we also follow a little bit in the beginning the woman who raised her and taught her magic and then towards the end of the book we also get to meet her daughter and I feel like the way that we move between these characters is just seamless. I love how the characters are crafted in this book but I also love the different settings that we get to see and how it's brought to life. I think the historical setting is done really really well and I just couldn't get enough of this book. It was fantastic. Next we actually have a horror book which is a little bit surprising to me because I don't read a lot of horror but I thought this was very very good. It's The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell and it's like historical fiction gothic horror and in here we meet this woman who has just gotten married and she's sort of married above her station but unfortunately just a few weeks after the wedding her husband dies so she's a widow and she's stuck in this house in the country where the servants don't really seem to like her, the villagers nearby just like actively avoid anything to do with the house, and the house itself just has a really weird vibe to it. Our main character does have one singular friend. She has her dead husband's weird cousin that she's sort of just stuck with, but they end up having to really stick together because there is something weird going on in this house, and it starts when they find this room in the attic that no one has been able to get into but suddenly they're able to get into it and in this room they find these wooden painted companions and after they find them these companions keep popping up everywhere in the house and in the beginning they're like the servants probably put them there but then as we go into the story there's definitely something more sinister going on and then people start dying. I found this to be incredibly creepy and I was genuinely like actually a little bit scared at the end of this and to be fair I did make the mistake of finishing this late at night like right before I was going to bed and it was really dark outside but this was just horrifying and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse but I also just couldn't stop reading it. I think the reason this worked for me is that although this is a horror book and there are things happening in it Again, we have a main character that we get to know and she has a backstory that's interesting and I really like that. And then it has this atmosphere to it that I think is just excellent. Like it makes me think of fog and haunted estates and it has like a Victorian ghost story vibe to it and it feels haunted in a lot of ways, which I really, really like. I also think that the horror builds really, really slowly, which just worked for me very well. And I kept like, when it started taking off, I kept thinking like, when is this going to end? Like it has to end soon. And it just got worse and worse and worse. But it did also end at like the perfect amount of horror for me. And I was scared when I finished this book and I don't think I could have taken much more. So it ended at the perfect time. And yeah, I just really, really enjoyed this book. And again, it's a book I think about a lot and it was just the perfect horror for me. Lastly, before we move on to my top three, we actually have the last book that I finished in 2023. It's Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. And I guess technically this also has some horror elements to it, but it's contemporary fiction and it's set in Japan. So it has a very different kind of vibe to it. In here, we follow this young girl who believes that she's been given magical powers by her stuffed animal that's like an alien she believes and she uses these magical powers basically to survive her life and her reality and everything that's happening to her 
Every summer though, she goes to the mountains in Japan to spend time with her extended family and there's like a festival and she's really close to one of her cousins who also escapes reality in kind of like a similar way. One of those summers though, something terrible happens that basically leads to the disintegration of this family and before they're ripped apart, her and her cousin promise each other that they're gonna survive no matter what. Then we meet our main character as an adult and she's basically just living a life where she's pretending to be normal so that no one will bother her. God, this book, it's weird. And I knew going into this that it was going to be a little bit weird, but I didn't realize how dark it was going to get and how quickly it was going to get dark. It explores taboos, societal pressures, trauma and survival. And it is kind of like a coming of age story, but it's not like any other coming of age story that I've ever read. I think one of the reasons that this had such an impact on me is because of the writing. It's kind of like matter of fact, and it has like a starkness to it that makes it quite shocking. And again, I wasn't prepared for how dark this book was going to get when I started reading it. So I didn't realize how twisted it was all going to be. But because of the way it's written, it just makes it even more shocking. I've also, again, I've thought about this book a lot since I finished it. And I think one of the reasons that I'm still thinking about it is because it has this deeply sad like underlying feeling to it that I can't quite pinpoint like yes it's weird and it's dark and it's kind of absurd in a lot of ways but it is also just so deeply sad this book and I think that's what's really sticking with me it's not a book that I would necessarily like easily recommend to people because I feel like it might not be everyone's cup of tea but it really made an impact on me finally we've made it to my top three reads of 2023. These three books are the books that got five stars for me this past year and I absolutely love them. I am a little bit stingy with my five star ratings. I don't really know why but for some reason these just really stood out to me and they're my absolute favorites. They're a little bit all over the place like it's a little bit of a mix but then I feel like my reading always is that way so it kind of makes sense. The first one I've got is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, which is a cozy fantasy book set in a magical world. And we meet this orc who is ready to retire from her life of violence and adventure, and she wants to find a new life for herself. And on her travels, she has discovered this amazing brew called coffee. And she's bringing it to this town where no one really knows what that is. And she basically opens up a coffee shop. <laughs> She's eventually joined by this other creature and they become friends and they eventually hire this Ratkin person who's a baker and together they run this coffee shop. Like that's basically the book. <laughs> it's a little hard to pinpoint why exactly this did it for me but I think it's a combination of the fact that I was really in the right mindset for this book when I read it and the fact that it's just so enjoyable. There's something really comforting about this book and I just got really sucked into it and I was so invested in this damn coffee shop and I don't even like coffee. I do love the main character in here though and that's really important to me and I just really liked seeing her try to find this new path for herself and I just immediately cared about her and I really liked her. This is, in some ways, a book where not a lot happens, but it did have some twists and turns that I didn't see coming, and I really liked that, and I just loved it. It's very, very wholesome, and it just was perfect for me. I also have to mention the little Ratkin baker that they eventually hire. I am obsessed with that little creature, and I would die for him and his cinnamon rolls, and he is just absolutely perfect. Maybe that's what made me give this five stars instead of four because I was so obsessed with this little rat baker. The second one I have is the masterpiece that is Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. This is historical fiction with a little bit of science fiction to it, but the science fiction really is just like a time travel element and that's all there is. In here, we follow a main character who is a modern black woman living in California and she's in her mid-twenties. 
and she is abruptly snatched from her time into the past and she's transported to 19th century Maryland to a plantation and once she gets there the first time she saves the life of the son of the plantation owner and basically throughout the story she keeps going back and forth in time and every time she's transported back it's to save this boy and eventually man's life. There's a lot more to the story but that's the basics of it. It explores history, home, trauma, race, privilege, freedom, and a lot of other things as well. And it does all of it so seamlessly, like it's really impressive. I am still amazed by this book and I think like it really blew me away and I'm still surprised that it blew me away because I had such high expectations going into this book and still it managed to surprise me, like it really caught me off guard. I thought I was prepared when I went into this book, but I was not. Although this came out in the 70s, it feels very modern and I love how Butler wrote this book and how she structured it. I love how she crafts characters and how she brings the historical setting to life, but I also think this is just a really clever book. And it's clever not only in the way that it explores the different themes, but also in the way it uses this time travel element and how that adds a lot of tension and excitement to the story. It's honestly a book I think everyone should read, not necessarily because of the themes, but because it's such a well-crafted story and it has everything you need in here. It has great characters, great setting, there's a lot going on in it and there are shocking moments and it's an exciting and tension-filled book, but it's also a book that will really make you think absolutely amazing. Then at the end here we have this beautiful book. This is The Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. This is historical fiction fantasy and in here we meet a retired female pirate who comes out of retirement after a decade to go on this quest for a final shot at glory and she ends up going on the adventure of her life which is really saying something because she's had quite the life already. Oh my god, I just loved this and you might know that I love reading adventure books and it's one of my favorite genres but I actually don't read that many adventure books because I find them really difficult to find. Like it's so difficult to find the kind of adventure book that I want to read. This is it though. Like this is the perfect example of the kind of adventure that I want to read and I wish that I could read a million of these. There are a lot of things that work for me in this book. Firstly, I loved reading about the main character. I really really like that she's a little bit older and she's already lived this whole life when we meet her and I think that that adds a really cool perspective to this book. She's also surrounded by other seasoned pirates and that I really liked as well. Like I liked the dynamics of it. We have all of these different amazing settings as well and it becomes more and more exciting as we go on this adventure and the settings start becoming more and more fantastical and although our main character is a seasoned pirate and she's traveled the world she's never been to these places so it's new to her as well which is really really fun. The story also takes a lot of twists and turns and it like went places that I was absolutely not expecting. I also think the writing in here is excellent but mainly this was just so much fun to read. It was so engrossing and I was so invested and I loved every single page of it and I I just feel like this was the perfect escapism and it's just everything that I wanted like I could not get enough of this book and it was just the perfect adventure. That was the last book though. That was my entire stack of my favorite books that I read in 2023. Now I'd love to know about your favorite books that you read in the past year. Maybe like your top three. I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for hanging out with me today and I will see you soon. Bye!